I'm actually part of the blockchain fund. You know, we funded at the very earliest stages, at the seed stage, OpenSea. We funded Yield Guild Games. We're working currently with a 6 seed on a title called Roboto Games. Super awesome founders of PopCap, Plants vs. Zombies. So we definitely love super OG gamers. So the concept behind my talk today is I really want to help people understand the evolution of Web3 Gaming, right? Because I think people are misunderstanding it. And I, my, I'm here to say that the revolution will not be televised. The revolution will be gamified. And my point of this is, is that there's definitely a lot of hate in the industry, I think, for NFTs. And in fact, gamers hate NFTs. Like, in my Uber ride over, I was talking to uh, my friend Chris, formerly from Consensus, and he was saying that he's in a Discord, and the moment he mentions NFT, there's gamers that just leave. They're like, I don't, it's a scam. I don't want to hear NFT. I hate NFTs, right? So if we're going to have a revolution, how are we going to have a revolution? When people say there's a revolution, they think of the French Revolution, right? The French Revolution, the people in the streets, the people in the streets basically went after Marie Antoinette off with her head, right? Like, get rid of the overlords, the rent-seeking intermediaries. Like, let's get rid of the people who have all the power, right? So this will not be a street revolution. This is not a street revolution. This is a revolution that is powered by a different kind of hate. The kind of hate that it's powered by is developers hate publishers. They hate the publishers. The publishers are the centralized rent-seeking intermediaries. My son, who's 17 years old, told me a joke. He said, why? is EA the worst company in North America? So the punchline is because Ubisoft is in France, right? So like everybody hates the publishers, right? So to me, the thing that will cause the revolution is first of all, venture capital has invested 7.6 billion, with a B, dollars into Web3 Gaming in 2022, last year. $7.6 billion, right? Now, this is what I have to say about it, right? That's data from uh, DAP, DAP Radar, right? And also from Venture Beat, Dean Takahashi. So what's going to happen, right? What I'm telling you is, is that the floor level of entertainment, the floor level is, imagine all the VCs go into Black Rock Desert and instead of burning man, they do burning cash. So they take the 7.6 billion in cash and they just burn it in front of everybody's face. That's what I call the entertainment floor, right? Which is that investment had better be more entertaining than a bunch of people in the desert burning a pile of cash that's $7.6 billion. Right. It better be more entertaining. If you don't get more game entertainment from this investment into Web3 Games, all of those VCs, including myself, should be fired. They should lose their jobs, right? Because burning $7.6 billion in cash is pretty entertaining, right? A lot of people would watch that. So what I'm, what I'm expressing to you is, is fun games are coming. They are coming. This summer, we're going to see the launch of a bunch of fun games. Right now, one of our portfolio companies, Bobob Studios, is launching Momoguro. That'll be fun game. Bunch of fun games coming, right? So here's my point. My point is, is who's the best person to sell NFTs to normal people? Who's going to do it? Who can sell an NFT to a normal person? I'll tell you who it is. Free to play game studios, free to play, free to play, because the free to play people can sell you something that you didn't even know existed, that you didn't know you wanted, that has no real existence in the world, and you will buy it. You're going to buy skins, you're going to buy swords, you're going to buy shields, you're going to buy all this stuff, digital assets, right? So the players aren't going to buy NFTs. 
they're going to buy swords and shields and skins that happen to be NFTs, right? To me, the idea that we're going to sell NFTs is just stupid because the NFT is a technology, right? People don't go on the store and say, I want to sell you uh, TCP IP, right? TCP IP is a technology, right? Nobody wants to buy TCP IP. And if you say my game is based on TCP IP, who cares, right? It doesn't matter. So the, the users aren't going to buy NFTs. They're going to buy swords. They're going to buy land. They're going to buy whatever they want. And the reason I'm so confident that they will buy these is because they're already buying them, right? Like in-game items are a multi-billion dollar industry, right? So they're already buying digital in-game items and they, these are just gonna happen to be NFTs, right? So someone asked me, what is the difference between Web2 games and Web3 games? What's the difference? So this is the difference. In Web3 games, the players own the game. In Web2 games, the game owns the players, right? Players don't want to be owned, right? But the problem is, is that players don't know what it feels like to own the game. They don't know what it feels like. So we have to basically convince them that they're going to enjoy owning parts of the IP, right? They own some of the IP in the game, right? They own characters in the game. Right? They own legendary items in the game, right? And they own potentially governance over the game, right? I'm a little cautious about governance over games, decentralized governance of games. The, the reason why I'm careful is if you read the Riot forums after patch day of League of Legends, the number of like crazy complaints about your champ getting nerfed it's just bananas, right? So like, if you can imagine decentralized governance over nerfing and buffing champs in League of Legends, like, it's never gonna happen, right? So you gotta be gradual about decentralized governance of the games themselves. But what I do wanna say is one place where I'm super excited is IP ownership. And the thing that's so cool about IP ownership in a game is basically that Derivative works become user-generated content, or UGC. And the thing that's exciting about this user-generated content is it's going to be buffed by AI, generative AI, right? So the idea becomes that if you own a character at a game, you can actually now, as an end user, start to generate IP, derivative IP, right, of this character, right? So if you have a character who's like a berserker, right, then you can make like the guy wearing a fur coat or you can make the guy wearing a red cape or you can make all the variations you want, right? And obviously something like Mid Journey or Stable Diffusion, like these things are just going to pump out derivative works, right? And so the, the user's going to enjoy their ownership of the IP, right? So I think that the idea of community-owned user-generated IP is super exciting, but I think people don't understand it. The, the, the players don't understand the power of ownership because they, they never had ownership before, right? So we just have to kind of trick them, right? We trick them by saying, oh, you're just buying a sword, right? But then maybe later on, the sword gives you a battle pass into a different game, right? Or the sword gives you access to a live concert or the sword gives you something else, right? And then all of a sudden, the user's like, oh, this is more powerful than a traditional in-game item. This is actually something, I mean, maybe what happens is you have a mechanism where you put the sword in the stone and then maybe in-game gold comes out, right? Which is staking, right? So then people are like, wow, this is more powerful than any other in-game item I've ever had. And eventually what happens is they, what they learn, what they learn is when they're done playing, they learn that they can sell this sword to another player and actually get cash. They get cash out for the sword, right? Once they figure that out, they're never gonna buy an in-game item that's not an NFT. Cause they're like, can I, can I sell this? Like when I'm done playing, can I sell the sword and get cash, right? And then it doesn't matter if it's called an NFT or not, right? Most games will say, no, you can't sell that. That's, you know, it doesn't belong to you. And you're like, but in this other game, I bought a sword and it actually belonged to me and I could sell it. So what I'm saying is, is that once the users feel the power of ownership, there's no going back. 
There's no going back, right? So to me, the revolution will not be televised. The revolution will be gamified, right? And I think that it is not an end user revolution. It is a game developer revolution against the publishing houses. So that's pretty much my thought for the day. Fun games are coming. Super excited. You guys are all building them. Super excited to meet you guys. Obviously, professionally, I'm a venture capital person. So I'm with Gumi Cryptos Capital, right? If you want to reach out to me, you, obviously, you can do so after this talk. But also, miko.com, that's my website. You can get all my socials there. DMs are open. So feel free to reach out. But you know, to me, really excited about this space. I think this is going to be the channel for crypto mass adoption, right? Is that it's going to be, there's 3.7 billion gamers, and the people that are gonna reach those gamers are the free to play game designers, the experienced game designers, because they can create such engaging experiences that those people are gonna join and become part of the, not just the Web3 gaming revolution, but the Ethereum and blockchain revolution. So anyhow, thanks very much.